Oh no, not the light again. I need to get up and fend. Another day, another life. What is the point in all this strife? some rest last night but my face shows me in a different light I'm so tired after all these games how can it be that my friends are just names I'm running late now I need to get ready why doesn't life feel calm and steady I used to pray it's been so long how can I connect to these unknown songs do they contain a message for me will they show me what I can be my day presents an open page let me color it with beauty instead of range what makes me who I am, what makes me a seek as I stand. Seems today's the day, let me ask my parents what they say. Fair enough, the five Ks exist, Makara always present on my wrist. Why is it there? What does it mean? Why is it important to keep our hair clean? What is the use of this turban I wear? What is the use of all this gear? Maybe my grandparents can help me understand the truth of my identity, what makes me who I am, what makes me a Sikh as I stand. The gears or uns unshown hair are regarded as a symbol of saintliness. The keeping of hair in its natural state is regarded as living in harmony with the will of God and, a sim and is a symbol of the Khalsa Brotherhood and the Sikh faith. The Kanga or the comb is necessary to keep the hair clean and tidy. The Gurus wore turbans and commanded the Sikhs to wear turbans for the protection of the hair and pro promotion of social identity and cohesion. A Khalsa is expected to regularly wash and comb their hair as Touch a matter of the soldiers' shorts must be worn at all times. It reminds the sick of the need for self-restraint over passions and desires. It ensures briskness during action and freedom of movement at all times. Karpan Karpan or the sword is the emblem of courage and self-defense. It symbolizes dignity and self-reliance, the capacity and readiness to always defend the weak and the oppressed. It helps sustain one's martial spirit and the determination to sacrifice oneself in order to defend truth, oppression and sick moral values. The Kara is a steel bracelet symbolizing restraint from evil deeds. It is worn on the index wrist and reminds the sick of the woes taken by him, that is, he is a servant of the Guru and should not do anything which may bring shame or disgrace. I can see why my identity is a key. The Sikh in a crown is easy to see. I look different from the rest, while the symbols remind me to be my best. People talk of Simran and its power, to remember Vaigru with every passing hour, to remove the evils that cloud our minds, and the web of Maya that can tightly bind. What are these evils? What can we do? 
Is Simran possible when they are present too? Let me ask one who knows about Simran. Maybe they could guide me in answering that question. What makes me who I am? What makes me a Sikh as I stand? Meditation is the recitation or the repetition of the name of God. Um, in other words, repeating why group. Simran also enables us to be in tune with God and also to merge with the Shabad Guru, which is in Sikhism, Guru Granth Sahib Ji. The purpose of Simran is to detach oneself through the material and physical world, which could include things like going to university, going to the cinema, going out with friends, going to the theatre. What Simran enables us to do is that it brings us down to reality and it brings us to a state of humility and we're able to merge with God. The reason why we actually do Simran is that so that we can actually attain a spiritual side to ourselves. The best time to actually meditate on God is what we call Amrit Villa. Now Amrit Villa can be translated as the early hours of the morning or during sunrise, that's when you can actually become one with God, when the whole of the world is asleep and you're awake and you, you can't hear any sound and your mind is actually clear, it's fresh, first thing in the morning and when you meditate on God you can actually feel and develop your relationship with Him. And nevertheless, even if you're not able to wake up in the mornings to do Simran, Guru Sahib Ji has told us to recite Naam with every breath in our body. So that means that throughout the whole 24 hours we should be remembering him and reciting Naam. Simran also helps to destroy the five evils that we all have in our bodies. The first one being lust, the second one being worldly attachment, third one being anger, fourth one being greed, and fifth one being ego. So what Simran does is that it enables us to detach from these five evil ones. It's very difficult to, to completely get rid of these five taboos. Nevertheless, with the continuous recitation of Naam, you can actually reach that spiritual state. Lust, rage, ego, attentment and greed these five evils on which we feed, the Guru Granth Sahib talks of them as diseases that can weaken our personality with total ease. The importance of being a good man, setting an example, making a stand. Guru Nanak gave us three teachings, do Simran, Seva and hard work for a living. For those Sikhs with busy careers, how do they find a way to practice their Sikhi every day? Let me ask one who's in that position. I wonder what their answers would be to that question. What makes them who they are today? How do they practice their Sikhi way? I'm Sikh. It's quite being kind of self-employed and running a small company, that you also make sure that you carry out your work in an honest way. And also important to be humble too. One of the things it teaches me, i.e. being Sikh, and actually being somebody that looks after people, is that you need to treat them with equality and respect. It's also important to be ethical in business. In an environment where it's very, very competitive, uh, it's important to ensure that you have an honest approach to your work. Uh, you should be winning your projects on the merit of your own capability and the capability of your team, rather than to, have it, to rely on any um, subversive uh, activities. It's also important to make time to pray as well. I mean, we can all get busy in work. We can always say, well, you know, I've got this proposal to do or work into the middle of the night and suddenly you're so tired you can't actually carry on in terms of saying, well, I've still got to do bad, I've still got to pray. The thing is, though, it shouldn't be seen as being something that you still have to do. I think it should be seen as something that you feel you really need to do. I mean, think about it in another perspective. God spends all his entire day and all of your lifetime looking after you. The least you can do is actually pray and meditate and uh, thank God for all the things that you actually have. In a world of battles and war, violence because everybody wants more, where women are still being oppressed and people are dying due to racial unrest. I'm proud to know that Sikhism reflects the message of equality in its holy texts. 
After all, we are brothers and sisters of the same race. There is no need to condemn someone from the nature of their face. Let me ask one who has that experience in seeing that Sikh principles in practice. Maybe it, it'll help me understand the way to be more open-minded man. What makes me who I am? What makes a Sikh as I stand? One of Guru Nanak's first teachings was Nako Hindu, Nako Muslim. This means there is no Hindu and no Muslim. And if we extend this, there is no Sikh, Christian or Hindu. These are all man-made labels. But in God's eyes, we're all the same. We're all equal. This teaching of equality is central to the Sikh faith. Both equality between races and religions, and also equality of men and women. The Sikhs stressed the important role of women in society, and even appointed women as local leaders. Uh, the Guru Granth Sahib, the Sikh holy book, contains not only the writings of the Sikh Gurus, but also of 31 saints from different faiths. The Guru Granth Sahib was first installed in the Golden Temple by Guru Arjan Dev Ji. Now, the Golden Temple is very interesting in that it's based at the lowest point of, in the city of Amritsar, um, showing humility. The Golden Temple has four doors facing four different directions, showing the openness of the Sikh faith, uh, welcoming people from all different traditions, from different parts of the world. In fact, on my last visit to the Golden Temple, I saw a group of Buddhist monks. They had come along because they also believe in the teachings of Guru Nanak. In fact, Guru Nanak visited Tibet uh, on one of his travels. The Golden Temple has several interfaith links. And the foundation stone was laid by Mia Mir, uh, a Sufi saint, uh, a Muslim Sufi saint. Today, many Sikhs take part in interfaith dialogue and working with other faiths to create a better, peaceful world. In 1499, while bathing in the river Bain, Guru Nanak disappeared for three whole days. He returned after his communion with God and his life changed thereafter. No Hindu, no Muslim were the first words he said to the people that feared he was dead. God was not concerned with faith or caste. Why should we disrespect others, he asked. People called Sikhs, strong warriors and lions. What was the need for them to fight? Let me ask someone who knows the history of the Sikhs and those who consider them foes. Maybe the history will show me how to be strong and defend myself and others from things going wrong. What makes me who I am? What makes me a lion as I stand? The first the greatest sacrifice was obviously given by Guru Arjan Dev Ji when he was put on a burning plate. But what we're gonna what I'm gonna tell you today is more about a sacrifice done by the ninth Guru Guru Dev Ji. Now he gave his life he was martyred, he gave his life not for the Sikhs, he gave it for the non-Mughal people of India. Now that's quite a big sacrifice to give. After that, Guru Gobind Singh Ji fought many battles. He lost four of his children, he lost his mother, obviously he lost his father because of what happened before with Guru Tegh Ji. But what did he do that for? not today to get into the history books but so we as Sikhs can hold our heads up high now that courage has been given to us by our gurus and today we should keep that courage going and not prevent cowardly things so by keeping our identity keeping our strength is to say that we're proud of who we are the gurus fought as we said many battles but still kept their identity after that, the British Empire came into India and World War I came into power. They were all called to the front line. It was really horrible. It was very bloody, very brutal, very muggy. But the Sikhs had given their word. And in this time, the Sikhs played a very important part at the, front, at the front line. Years later, the World War II came and the British knew how strong these Sikhs are. Accounts were given by other Sikh generals, uh, by other generals in the world, saying that if the Sikhs and the Gurkhas, who are an army from Nepal, were on their side, they would have won the World War. It's a very small fraction of people that are actually in the British army, but have done an immense 
amount of work. The main part for Sikhs in keeping their strength was to keep their faith. At that time in the British army, a Sikh could not enter the army if he was not a baptised, i.e. an Amritari Sikh. If he wasn't an Amritari Sikh, he couldn't go into the British army. Pre-World War I, many regimental Amrit Sanjars took place. Thousands of Sikhs took Amrit at this place to join the army. No other religious organisation, religious group, could have more than 20 minutes of, of uh, collective worship a day, apart from the Sikhs. The Sikhs, the British Army gave the Sikhs four hours a day to do their Nitinim, to do their Sukhyasin, to do their Reras every day. Why? Because the British Army believed that the power of the Sikhs is in the power of their identity. In Gregor Singh's army, there was a guy called Pai Ganeya, who was a water carrier. Pai Ganeya um, was a water carrier and he used to carry a water in a sheepskin. And one day he was caught giving water to the enemies. Gregor Singh called him to his room and he said, What's this I hear that you're giving water to the enemies? And he said to Guruji, he said, Well, wait a minute. He said, You told me to give water to all Sikhs, uh, to all people of God. He said, I see people of God in everyone. And he said, by seeing someone who's injured, I can't tell what side of the army they're from. All I see in their eyes is God. So take that into example and to become a real true honest Sikh, the whole idea is about doing seva. And this spits into many things, not just by going into the Gurdwara, but just generally being a good person every day and doing your daily good deeds. They defend those with no defence. They are humble and their courage was immense. If God lived in everybody's heart, what would be the need to start? A conflict, a war, or something to kill for? All the time, the Sikhs were being selfless, caring for a community and their helpless. The message is learn to give, not just take, no matter what sacrifice you have to make. Seva is an act of caring and giving, which we can incorporate into our living. Now it's making sense to me, the way a Sikh is meant to be. When I look in the mirror, it's not the same. Life no longer feels like a game. When I walk these steps, it's because I want to. I look for the way to be good and true. Remembering the five gifts of Guru Gobind Singh Ji, using the simples to live faithfully. Keeping silent, merging with God, no longer seems pointless or not. There's a peace that no one can explain, but which is possible to obtain. Men or women, black or white, we can walk together to find the same light. This is the right that Sikhs have fought for. Injustice is something we never ignore. It has come to the end of the day, and I'm no longer afraid. It has come to the end of the day, now I know the way. To seek the truth and be in the position, to answer that important question, for I know now, what makes me who I am, what makes me a Sikh as I stand. <laughs>